Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and welcome to the ninth episode on how to write a proper high school lab report. Today we're taking a look at the discussion section. So first things first, it should be between one and five paragraphs in length. Now I understand that's a pretty big gap. Depending on the lab, you would choose closer to one or closer to five. So let's say this is a small lab, it comes maybe near the start of a unit of study, then it would be closer to one paragraph. If it's a major summative lab, it comes at the end of the unit of study, and the whole point is to show everything you know, then closer to five paragraphs would be better. Also, if it's an inquiry lab where you're making up the experiments on your own, closer to five paragraphs would be better because you have a lot more explaining to do. It should relate to the theory that you've learned either in class or the research that you've done, should relate to the observations, and it should relate to the analysis. So here you're discussion, discussing all the information that you found and relating it back to the theory should be accurate based on the actual results that you obtained. So if your observation section gave you certain numbers, you analyzed it, you got a final result, your discussion should be based on that result. Even if you know it's wrong, that's okay. Discuss based on that result and then maybe analyze why that was the wrong result, but you need to have your lab report based on what you actually obtained in your results in your analysis. It should be written in the past tense, and it should be written in the passive voice. So again, passive voice is to avoid personal pronouns like I, me, we, us, and so on. Here's an example. Instead of writing, we realized that the size of measurement of the beats was a major source of error for us. So it has two personal pronouns that we want to get rid of. A better statement would be, the size measurement of the beats was a major source of error. So that would be in the passive voice and it gets rid of those personal pronouns. Now there are two types of labs that we'll look at, standard labs and inquiry labs. For a standard lab, the majority of the marks are just based on showing that you understand why the uh, results that you obtained, why you actually obtained them. So showing that you understand the theory that you learned in class and in your research and applying that to understand why you obtained your results. For an inquiry lab, in addition to that, so you still need to include that information, you're also going to include information on sources of error. And don't forget to explain that error. Don't just tell me sources, but explain why that's error. And then also the strengths and limitations of the lab. So strengths, why was this a great lab? What did you do well? Limitations, what didn't go so well? And how could you improve upon that for next time? And then lastly, some labs will include discussion questions. I don't include them as often as some other teachers, but many teachers will include them for every single lab. So obviously some of your labs uh, in my class or may maybe many of your labs in other classes will have discussion questions. Those also go in the discussion section. And your marks are awarded for complete and accurate answers. Also, the highest marks, if you're really looking to get those top marks on your lab, you need to show a high level of comprehension and insightful details. So that goes back to doing additional research rather than just what we've taught you in class and comparing it to the results that you obtained. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.